My name is Dr. Ben Sinclair. I am a lead GP of the Optimised Health Clinic in Birmingham and I'm here today to talk about menopause. Um, I'm joined by Fiona Allen. Fiona, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, hello. My name is Fiona Allen. Um, I'm Chief Executive of uh, a theatre in Birmingham. Uh, I'm a busy executive woman with a very full-on job and a lot of um, outside commitments as well. Thank you, Fiona. And um, we're here to talk about menopause. So um, my, my first question to you is, from your personal experience, how did you know that, um, that you needed to see a doctor about the menopause? And, and how did you find the experience of, of getting help? Well, to be honest, I didn't know I had to see a doctor and it hadn't really crossed my mind to see a specialist uh, to get help. Um, I knew I knew that I was menopausal or perimenopausal. I knew that this had been happening for a couple of years. I'd been having hot flushes and all sorts of other symptoms, mm. but I never considered going to a doctor. It sounds silly when I say it now. I never considered it. I had been having symptoms for a while, but because it's cumulative, it's not, you know, it's a gradual thing. Yeah. It had never really hit me that um, it was as bad as I think it was. Okay. Uh, until I was having lunch with a friend of mine who's my age and has been through all of this herself. And during the lunch, I had an incredible hot, hot flash right. and was feeling terrible. And she said, oh, just give me a moment. And she said, you know, your life doesn't need to be like this. And it was revelationary, actually. And over, she told me she had seen a specialist. Mm -hmm. And also she sent me a fantastic book on menopause to read, which I was able to sort of digest and understand the science of what was going on with me yeah. and I immediately reached out and wanted to get a specialist appointment. Okay, fantastic. And I think um, we we met at about around about that time and we were just starting up our menopause service. And so I introduced you to our uh, menopause specialist GP, Dr. Catherine Coward, and then you you saw Catherine. Talk me through um, how 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 did you find the experience of of, of going through the motions of um, seeing a specialist and um, working things out? Uh, I I found seeing Dr. Catherine very easy. Uh, it was easy to get an appointment. It was easy to go to the clinic and to see her. Um, I think that even in discussion with her, um, I realised just how symptomatic I was. And how many of the niggles and bothersome things that were affecting my daily life mm. were due to menopause. Yeah. And as I said earlier, because it's a gradual cumulative thing, you just don't realise the effect that it's having on you. Yeah. Um, and so to just to be able to talk to another person and a person who's been through it themselves yeah. um, was incredible. Because up until that point, it had never occurred to me to talk to a doctor about it. And that's because my... My very nice and lovely local NHS GP, he's the last man I would go and talk to about a lot of the symptoms I was having. And I think, um, I mean, the fact that you're able to talk to someone who's been through it before, who's also a specialist and, and who's kind of, um, who gets it, mm. probably quite a powerful, um, powerful revelation for you, along with realising that there was something going on. Um, thank you for that. Tell me about the effects it was maybe having on your life or your work. Um, what, what was what was happening? What was the impact of your menopausal symptoms before you got treatment? I hadn't realised how impactful they were. Um, and I think I was in denial of the impact they were having. Um, profound lack of sleep. I mean, I was having sort of hot flashes and, you know, all, all the night sweats pretty much every night, never sleeping through the night. Um, I think I just had, I was really sleep deprived and hadn't realised that. Um, I, I was having just mood swings up and down all the time, almost like premenstrual mood swings of just, you know, and, and almost overreacting to some things. I could go from naught to a hundred in my responses very quickly, whether that was um, positive or negative. Oh, exactly. I never really felt calm. I was on edge all the time. Mm. And I know that that must have been rubbing off on the people I work with mm. because I'm a chief executive and people are looking to me for calm and consistency. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think I was being either of those things, particularly calm or consistent. 
Um, I was doing the very best that I could, but yeah. I hadn't realised that it was menopause that was contributing to that. Mm, interesting. Since since this revelation to yourself, have you come across other people and and realised that it? You know, do you spot the signs in other people, or have you have you raised other people's awareness since this has happened? Yes, I've become a bit evangelical about it <laughs> because if it hadn't been for a friend of mine um, who's in a you know a, a similar exact you know situation to me, saying, "Look, you you can get treatment for this," and her treatment had worked instantaneously and very well. Mm. I'm saying the same to women I know, um, and it's such a it's such a societal problem, I think, that we don't talk about it. Mm. You know, this happens to 50% of the population at some point, yeah. and it's such a taboo to talk about. Mm. And but now that I've too. met with Dr. Catherine and started talking about it, yes. I'm talking about it all the time, and damned if it makes other people feel uncomfortable. This is a real medical condition I'm going through, and so do 50% of the population. So yes, I'm telling friends and colleagues exactly what's going on, and um, uh, advising other women to go and seek professional help with it. So, Fiona, um, how easy is it, do you think, for staff to speak up about these issues in work? You've mentioned it's a big taboo. It, for me, it almost seems like one of the final taboos. We've had mental health awareness, we've got uh, equality and diversity, but and yet, for some reason, menopause seems to have dropped off the radar and, and still seems to be a taboo. I, I agree with you, and even though I've been saying I'm speaking to everyone about it, I'm still reticent about talking to colleagues about it. Um, I don't think it's just menopause. I think we don't really talk about menstruation in the workplace either, and that's something that's happening to you know 50% of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's still just this taboo around women's health generally. Uh, I, I found that I was, you know, one of the symptoms I was having um, unbelievably bad cramping when I did have one of my irregular periods and for the first time in my career I was taking days off because of having a period mm. and I would lie about the cause I'd say oh I just had a bad stomach and I couldn't come in there was no way I was going to say to colleagues that it was actually related to menopause um, because somehow it still seems, even in 2020, it seems like some sort of female weakness. And so I didn't want to look weak, I guess, yeah. um, rather than being acknowledged as it should be, as you know, a condition that people in the workforce need to make allowance for. Absolutely. And we make allowance for all sorts of other things, as you know, as you were just mentioning, we make allowance for people with all sorts of abilities, uh, with all sorts of different health conditions, people who, who have childcare issues, people have, you know, there's a lot of flexibility these days in the workforce. And yet, this, something that is going to happen to all women at a certain age is something we don't talk about, we don't have policies about, and we don't offer support for. And I think it really needs to be the next um, the next revolution. <laughs> it needs yeah. to be the next thing that we give some focus to. And I certainly hope that I can help a little in that. I'm sure you can. I think having a, a champion who is, you know, sort of uh, in the public eye, who's you know, at the top of her game, speaking about these issues really, uh, really will help other, other people to, to speak up and to recognise those things happening in themselves. Um, I also think, um, um, we've become more aware of mental health issues and a lot of this has, has perhaps become as you know the, the, the cover's been peeled off because actually a lot of mental health issues like sort of new anxiety or new insomnia new new um, poor concentration have actually been dismissed as, as mental health problems but actually they're menopause related and suddenly mm. we're beginning to become more aware of mental health so we've begun to become more aware of the things that that go with it so um it's great to hear that you're, you're passionate about um, sending out good messages. If, if you were going to send a message to business leaders, to business owners, to bosses and to employees everywhere about, about menopause, what would it be? Could you sum that up in a pithy statement for us? So start talking about it. Start yeah. giving it some airtime in your workforce yeah. and you, you might be surprised um, what comes back from your employees. Mm, mm. And because everyone will know someone or if, if, if they're not themselves, you know, 
who is of, of an age, and this can happen anytime between sort of 30 and 60, mm -hmm. this can be affecting people. So it's a massive chunk of a woman's career often when, the, when seniority is occurring as well and, and responsibility. So it strikes me that we need to start talking about this a lot. Um, and um, Dr. Catherine, who you saw, is actually also doing some webinars and um, sort of talks about menopause in the workplace to try and raise raise the profile so she's really hoping that that will help to raise raise awareness and and some of these things we're doing on on um, webinars um, or or face to face hopefully covid permitting i think my message could also be that this isn't a female issue it's a workplace issue and it's a workplace health issue yeah and it is wrong to just categorize this um as some form of women's trouble that's, I think that's, what's, that's what's suppressed it before and, and, and it, it, it really has mm. and i think a huge embarrassment uh, as we've said it, a taboo um from both sides about talking about it in fact one time i tried to have a conversation about you know my menopausal symptoms at work um at, to a male colleague who was in my office at the time and i said look i really need to get a fan for my desk because i keep having these hot flashes and a fan would be really helpful and i have never seen someone exit an office as quickly as this man scurried away to avoid having a conversation with me about it and i think we we have to open up to the fact we can you know this this conversation can be had and i think men and women find it difficult to talk about but i thought gosh if i was a pregnant woman in the workplace and i said oh my baby just kicked me everyone would just go oh are you all right i mean it would actually just be a kind of normal thing to report That's true. That's true. but what i said wasn't <laughs> it's funny because actually i mean this is almost treated like a um a secret illness or disease that no one talks about and and and, and not not natural but actually it's a natural process that happens and um, so in a way the more we talk about it uh, the more we're going to be but this is this is the truth i mean female older female members of my family have never talked to me about it my mother and i have never had the menopause talk or never did until after i started having symptoms and started talking to her about it mm. this isn't knowledge that's transferred very well even amongst women no. so you know it is a secret something um i know you do a lot of work in schools um and i wonder whether there might even be as part of the sort of um social development you know uh, some some explanation of what might happen in the later years rather than just what's going to happen right now because i think for men's health and women's health yeah, but yeah. we kind of cover you know adolescence and procreation and things and, and, and then the that. expectation of life changes kind of stops yeah it just drops off a cliff there with it just just does you have your babies and that's it then i know i know and i think i think um i guess the tradition is that you know because women were not making up a large amount of the workforce in the past it's it's, it's never been broached and now that, that the workforce especially in this country is more more equal uh, in terms of uh, demographic rather than pay um, then you know I suppose um, it really needs to be a conversation we're having now yes and I think we just need to start having the conversation and encouraging other people to do so um, I hope you don't mind me saying Fiona when when you um, gave us some feedback after you'd seen Dr Catherine you said you know you thought that um, you would really struggle during the lockdown if you hadn't started um, some HRT treatment what have you noticed since the treatment has happened and what's changed for you? Well, the impact of the treatment was almost instant. It was in three or four days of starting to, you know, to use estrogen uh, that everything just changed. It sort of rewound the clock to the way I've been feeling years ago it felt like a second lease of life. And I know this sounds like I had some sort of miracle cure, but it honestly felt like that. Yeah, um, and it was only on sort of rolling the clock back and the feeling like I used to sort of five or six years ago, I realized just how many symptoms I had and, and how much of an effect it was having on me. So it was, it was a nearly instant change. And the biggest thing I would say is just, just have much steadier moods, calmness and sleep, mm. the ability to sleep through the night. Yeah. And I think all of these things are obviously interwoven. So getting a good night's sleep, not feeling sleep deprived is obviously going to help your coping mechanisms, help with anxiety, help, help you, you know, your mood regulation. Yeah. So all of that just tidied itself up. Right. And I had been, you know, in the 
the few weeks when we knew that COVID-19 was a problem and that we were likely, because we were looking to other countries, likely to go into some sort of lockdown. Yes, I live alone and I was really worried about my mental health. I thought that this would be very problematic for me to be isolated and alone um, for a period of how many months it might be. Yeah. And actually, I think this, this was a lifesaver for me that I was able to get this treatment really the week before it started. Amazing. And all of a sudden, it was like, oh, no, actually, my coping mechanisms come back. Okay. It's great to see you've got your mojo. Yeah, That's mojo great. came back, but also just that kind of inner resilience, that yeah. kind of inner strength came back, which is, no, actually, this doesn't frazzle me. I can cope with this one day at a time. I mean, I know it's been difficult for everybody, but I truly think that if I was going through this at the sort of height of my menopausal symptoms, yeah. I, I'd be climbing the walls. Yeah, fantastic. I think the, the you know, hormones, they go through the whole body. They affect the brain, mm -hmm. all organs. You know, they are neurotransmitters, and so they have multiple effects on multiple systems. So it's great to hear you say that actually it's, it's really improved things all round. Um, how did you find the sort of um, the, the follow-up process and the, the kind of, um, um, you know, a few weeks down the line? And um, I think we had a video, uh, video consult, didn't we? We did. We had a video consult um, after the first six weeks, I think, of treatment. I mean, actually, Dr. Um, Dr. Catherine followed up, I think, within the next week or so, just to make sure that everything was going okay. And then after I'd been through a sort of couple of cycles of the medication, we caught up again with a, a, a more comprehensive yeah. video conference and it was great. It was, it was good to check in. It was good to be able to discuss how I was feeling. It was very easy and easy to do it by video, but I think we've all learned how to do things by video too in the last few months <laughs> that actually having a doctor's consult by a video feels completely normal now. <laughs> that was the other thing. I got hormones. I got my, my faster broadband the day of lockdown. <laughs> <You were good>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for that, because actually that could have been the thing that drove me around the twist. <laughs> Fantastic. One final question. Would you, would you recommend Dr. Catherine um, as, um, as a specialist you know, from your experience? I would unreservedly recommend Dr. Catherine, and indeed I already have recommended to friends and family and, and given leaflets to friends and things because uh, I found it an incredibly easy process and one that made such an enormous change to me and so quickly. Uh, I couldn't believe I hadn't done it years ago. That was probably the thing I kicked myself about most was yeah. why did I let it get so far without recognising that I needed to see a doctor? Definitely. And given it was so easy and the change was so instant, um, absolutely, I, I think everyone should seek a specialist to, yeah. you know, if, if they are having menopausal symptoms. And I think it's good to check in with someone who can tell you exactly scientifically what's going on with your body, what the risks are, yeah. you know, what, what, what if any risks of taking HRT are, it, it was really useful. Great. I, I think she must have a fantastic job because basically she gets to empower other people. To, yeah. To then blossom and flourish, wind back the clock. It's a yeah, win, isn't it? exactly. It, goes away exactly. it was like the elixir of use, really. <laughs> Well, I, I think, you know, I think you can't underestimate that. And the, the hormones dropping off is exactly what you're replacing. You're, you're pushing back the years in terms of biochemistry. Mm. Fiona, thank you so much for um, joining me today. It's been fantastic to see how you've benefited from uh, dealing with your menopause, being more open about it. And it's great to hear that actually you're now you know, promoting a similar approach, um, mm. which I think, I think will really serve the rest of the country well because we need to address this and we need to we need to take forward those good messages um we'll be uh online offering this service from from now on and we also do um some webinars on uh, menopause awareness for men and women because i think as as men we equally need to know more about this like you say um so i just want to say thank you for joining me today and um uh, really great to see you again Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for you know talking to me about it, and I'm happy to do so anytime. Fantastic. Thank you.